Hey guys, Tony here from Rolling the Bullens. Well, day after Thanksgiving, sitting around, not much going on. So we'll get out and explore a little bit. So let's get ready to rock and roll, see what we can get ourselves into. So come along. So I just came across some remnants of the old Erie Canal. If you guys are not real familiar with the Erie Canal, go look it up. It's worth the read, especially if you like history. Man, there was a lot of hard work. They were using kids as young as like nine years old. A lot of these kids died helping to build the Erie Canal. Back in those days, they used anybody who was able-bodied to do anything. You know, so kids today just don't know how easy they got it. But anyway, we're going to go over here and check out these old uh, ruins of the Erie Canal because uh, me personally i like that kind of stuff and uh, like i said you know but i i like history and that's part of the other reason we like full-time rv is we get to come across things like this this is what makes it worthwhile uh being a full-time rver is it's like getting out and exploring the local area see that we've lived here in ohio pretty much all of our lives and you know we thought we'd been around things but see i still discover things that i haven't seen in our home state so that's why i said guys get out full-time rving it's just an avenue to get you out and see some amazing things now like i said this is gonna be something probably i like more than some of you but uh if you like history you like the way man did things you'll probably find this interesting but like i said definitely look up the erie canal uh they used to run supplies from lake erie down to the surrounding states to the erie canal um i'd have to read up again and find out exactly which states they all went through but you know like i said if you read it up you'll figure it out but it's very cool so let's go take a look and see what we can get ourselves into over here and see what kind of cool stuff awaits us over here one of the cool things about ohio is we have a lot of abandoned parts of the erie canal like i'm standing in what used to be one of the locks amazing how they did the rock formation here you know back in the day i mean look almost like precise it makes you wonder how they actually got all this stuff together you got to transport i know they mine this stuff from the local area to make this all come about in each place where there's a lock on the canal but still amazing to think about the way they did things back then you know so just very cool part of history of ohio you know in the area canal very neat the way they did things. As you can see, this is what's uh, leftover remains of part of the Erie Canal outside of Canal Winchester, Ohio. Pretty cool. Actually, standing in what used to be underwater for the canal, <laughs> as you guys can see the covered bridge. However, I would only assume either that was deeper <laughs> underneath the bridge at one time, or this bridge is an afterthought to over the canal after they really quit using the canal. Ohio sure does have a lot of covered bridges though. That's one cool thing about it. You can Ohio. actually rent this bridge here for like weddings, parties I guess. Kind of cool. I guess they considered this place actually Lockville, Ohio. I'm assuming because of the Erie Canal Lock. So I guess uh, <laughs> they thought long and hard about that name. But yeah, you can actually rent that out special events so i'm assuming it's weddings i don't see anybody having like a family picnic on the bridge but yeah you know to each other we can see here's uh two more parts of the lock i think it was 11 12 and 13 is what they call these um don't quote me on that but we're gonna walk down here and check out the other two parts of the lock like i said you can see the remnants of what was a town here 
Well, still barn there. But there is some. Um, of course, they turned this into a park. All that good stuff. So they got picnic benches and all that. But there's a little bunch of houses over here in one little area. So I'm assuming that was actually the town of Lockville. It's very cool. Not quite sure what lock this is. I'm assuming this is number 12. Or could we look at it backwards? That's just so interesting. I feel like history, the way things were transported back in the day, and I'm in transportation, so it's kind of kind of interesting to me. We were going to go down and look at the other one, but you see down there it is. Way on that, if I can zoom in. There's another big piece of the lock, but this looks like it's on private property. As there's a house right there. I don't know if I feel like getting shot at today. So, if I can get down there, I will. You get a look at that side too. Unfortunately, it's starting to fall apart a little bit here. That means that ground's probably getting a little unstable. We'll keep our butt over here a little bit. And I'm all about being on the danger side and hanging over the side of stuff, but it's been raining a lot. So I imagine it wouldn't take much for that piece to fall over with my old butt. We'll stick back a little closer to the hard pack. This is just very interesting. Apologize for the diesel truck running. Somebody lives over there and they're getting propane delivered. But yeah, look at the ground. It's starting to sink in around here. Which makes for some cool landscape. But yeah, this is... I said I'm really just amazed by the craftsmanship you know how this stuff continues to stand after all these years and we can't seem to make anything nowadays that lasts more than 30 years just amazing when you think about the simplicity of the tools they had the way they put this stuff in place it's just amazing as I'm looking off to the left side of these um, locks here look at the way the ground is up higher here and here I'm kind of almost wondering if the canal didn't run through some of that too hmm I'm gonna have to try to find an old map of the area or look up something here in the books and see what uh, if that's the way the water originally ran and they use these locks to bring stuff into the town here I'm not sure one other thing about the Erie Canal was that they actually used horse to pull the canal boats from the shore, which was very interesting. And out in Coshocton, Ohio, actually Roscoe Village area, I can't remember the state route it is, but they actually have a canal boat ride out there where they actually still pull the canal boat by horse from the shore. Um, and you can go out and ride it. I think it's like seven or $10 per adult. You know, it's not a very long ride. But it's interesting and something to do. The kids will love it. Um, even if you're a kid at heart, you'll probably like it, if you, especially if you uh, like history. See the way things were done at a simpler time in life. Well, I guess really what a simpler time, you worked your ass off. And a lot of people went to an early grave because of the sketchy shit like putting this stuff together and got hurt and killed. And uh, man... But, you know, it's a step back in time. Kind of cool. But like I said, see the way this here is cut out? It kind of makes you wonder if the water didn't run over here, too. We'll go back up here to the information center and see if it says anything. You can see the houses over there. That's what I assume is Lockville. It's actually off of Pickerington Road. That's where this place is at. Um, south of US 33. Anybody want to go on a psychedelic trip? No, I do not condone eating mushrooms going on a psychedelic trip. But, uh, I don't know. Miss Jill had to work today. I didn't want to sit around in a camper, so, you know, off for the holidays. So, whew, I need a haircut. <laughs> and I uh, thought I'd get out here and just kind of explore the backyard, I guess. Um, this is not very far from where we're camping. And, uh, like I said... We could probably make a series of videos 
about the Erie Canal and actually hit all the spots. The covered bridges. We could probably make a big series of just the covered bridges here in Ohio. Yeah. We used to go on a lot of motorcycle rides, two covered bridges. Very cool. You're going to be able to see that, but apparently I was wrong on the order of the locks. The first one we looked at was actually 11. The second one we looked at was 12. And the one that we couldn't go to because of private property was 13. Well, I guess there's a few more down through there. 14 through 17 also are on private property. Um, and then that covered bridge was built in 1988, or 1988, 1888 by Jacob Blue Jeans Brandon or William Funk. So I guess they don't know who did it. Um, anyway, that bridge was actually placed here in 1967. It was originally at Wheeling Road and Raccoon Creek in Pleasant Run, east of Lancaster, Ohio. Hmm, okay, interesting. Then, here's kind of a map of where some of the locks are. But yeah, the other ones, uh, 14 through 17, are north of where we're at here. So back toward US 33. And um, it's all on private property, so you might get shot. Well, on the bottom of that key up there telling you what things are, there's actually some addresses for some other spots on the Erie Canal that may be around here. Um, I'll try to put the picture in the video here. Uh, you had to probably blow it up or I'll try to blow it up before I put it on there rather um, Because there's quite a bit of a glare because it's in a glass case and not much I can do about that Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the Erie Canal as much as I did today I want to say thank you for coming and hanging out with me and going on this little adventure with me Whether you live full-time in an RV or you're just traveling around the weekend or just getting out of your stick and brick Never forget, there's always something in your backyard. It doesn't have to be across the country. Get out and explore. Live your best life. Stay safe out there, and we'll talk to you guys down the road. Bye.